Greetings online travelers, I'm Arone Tempest and welcome back to the Dissection Laboratory. Before we begin, allow me to introduce our current specimen. Meet Lily Pete. She's a rather controversial figure in the brony analysis community. On February 27th, 2017, she released a video titled Glass of Water, an artist meltdown story, which contains Lily's views on giving artists credit and an account of an artist diva's breakdown, or at the very least according to Lily. This video wasn't received very well, and some people like Gwis here already covered the video. However, I have an issue or 12 to address. So without further ado, strap yourselves in, and let's charge ahead. What up YouTube, it's your boy Jim Sterling with a life hack for you. Like most YouTubers who make work in this format, I don't flood my credits page with sources for every cocking image that goes into the video. Nobody would consider that reasonable. In general, unless something is a prominent feature of the video, like the thumbnail, or I'm using it longer than the allotted 30 seconds set by YouTube, I don't bother with credits or permission because we all know why. Okay, that's a nice set of rules you got there. Don't credit something unless it was used for more than 30 seconds or it was in the thumbnail. I don't 100% agree with that point, but hey, at least you give credit, fair enough. Say, I'm a bit curious to who made that image in the thumbnail. I hope you don't mind if I just check their description and, uh... Um... That's awkward. Seriously, you had one rule, and you couldn't even keep that for more than five seconds. You later say in the video that this is a big deal. So congratulations, you just won the grand prize. Valatora, show Lily what she's won. A less credible platform to spout your biased opinions on! So, I guess I'll just have to do the dirty work for you. This piece of artwork is titled Witches Aren't Just for Halloween, and was made by an artist named Anime Christie. I'm sure that name isn't really important to you, so let's move on. You won! Life hack! Art, like any other skill, has always been and will always be subject to the Dunning-Kruger effect, a cognitive bias in which low-ability individuals suffer from illusory superiority, mistakenly assessing their ability as much higher than it really is. What does that matter? People think they have more talent than they actually do, so what? The wiki page that you ripped off for your own description says that Dunning and Kruger propose that people who are incompetent at a given skill will A. Fail to recognize their own lack of skill B. Fail to recognize the extent of their inadequacy C. Fail to accurately gauge the skill of others and D. Recognize and acknowledge their own lack of skill only after they're exposed to training for said skill. None of those propositions are even relevant to what you're talking about, nor does it change the fact that some artists may want credit regardless of their skill level, and you should be treating this as a case-by-case -case basis instead of a generalized mess based off of an irrelevant cognitive bias. What you are doing here is insulting the skill of any artist who acts for credit by implying that skilled artists don't ask for credit. Now then, onto more pressing matters. Where's the link to the wiki page you took this from? You quoted the page, why isn't it in the description? You have no excuse here, because unlike artists, you have to credit articles you cite if you want to be taken seriously. You wouldn't want to be labeled as a plagiarist, don't you? You can spot a low-skilled diva pretty quickly if you have any social skills whatsoever. They're obsessed about having 100% control over an image file they knowingly submitted to the internet without any sort of identifying marks. You'll probably find them on Tumblr, sneering at likes and whining about not getting reblogged and writing sanctimonious pages about how it discourages artists when they don't get attention. And they probably charge exorbitant amounts for commissions and then turn around and lecture you because you're a normal person with financial responsibility and $100 for a piece of fan art is fucking unreasonable. I don't even spend that much on food in a month. Let's tackle this point by point. Point. 1. Art divas want 100% control of something that they knowingly posted on the internet. Why wouldn't they? Just because they posted something to the internet, it does not negate their request regarding how the work should be used. After all, companies online don't let you take their stuff freely without guidelines regarding how you should credit them. Heck, the DMCA claims actual purpose is to stop actual theft of intellectual property. What you're basically saying is, if an artist submits a painting to an art gallery and someone steals their work, they should not be allowed to complain because they submitted their work to an open art gallery. And I say, hey. That's asinine. 2. Artists on Tumblr complain about not getting reblogged and not getting attention. Well, genius, maybe you should look at the image that you decided to use in your own video. 
Their reasoning is that liking without reblogging does not allow an artist to grow, because the only people who can see likes are the people who already follow the artist, while reblogging can introduce them to a new audience who may not be familiar with the work of the artist, allowing them to grow. How dare somebody want to grow their audience, right? And does it take much effort to reblog something? I don't think so. 3. Artists charge a lot for their art and lecture you if you can't pay for it. Okay. What if they use commissions to pay for their living expenses? If they lower prices, they may not be able to make ends meet, depending on how many commissions they get. Do you literally want them to become starving artists because you either can't or won't pay for the artist's services? You monster. Either way, you're ignoring a key factor in this equation. Time. You are paying the artist those prices because of the time they have to invest in the work of someone else. We pay people for their time spent on the work of other people, so why should artists be treated any differently? Also, you don't spend $100 a month on food, but you're perfectly okay with someone spending $500 a month to you on Patreon for nothing more than what you can get for $45 a month. I don't care if that Patreon rank was a joke or not, you can't complain about charging a flat $100 for a picture while having the option of someone paying five times that monthly for nothing more than a free recommendation to a financial advisor in the area. If you've been on either of these sites, you've most certainly run into something like this. They are to DeviantArt and Tumblr what narcissistic asset flippers are to Steam. They believe they're entitled to your attention, that you're obligated to provide them with an audience, and also that they get to yell at you when you change your mind about buying their art after seeing the price and deciding it's too much. Hey, Lily, there's a key difference between an artist of any kind and Steam asset flippers. Artists make their own work, regardless if they're paid or not. Asset flippers purchase and sometimes steal work from others, and always sell them back to you as their own work. In fact, many asset flippers steal from artists and get money doing it. Surprise you of all people missed that little detail. Also, Christ Lily, you really want to paint these artists in a bad light, don't you? Comparing these artists to people who are not only hated in most gaming circles, but are a direct threat to those artists in question? Don't you think that's a bit much? This is Anime Christie, and her story is the answer to the often asked question of what happens when an art diva encounters someone who isn't having their shit. When Bombing Run released, it opened with a shot of me using a piece of Christie's artwork to throw shade at relentless nitpickers from the episode before it. A few days after the video's launch, I received a message from a patron saying that Christie was unhappy that I used her artwork and wanted to be credited in the description. I reiterated my own rules, saying that I don't credit quickfire visual aids, and the response was a request to not use the artwork anymore. I said that I would think about it, and that was the end of that. Hold on just a minute here, you said you'd think about it? That's a slimy answer if I ever saw one. This is a patron, someone who gives you cash, caring about the feelings of another artist they like, and not only was their quest denied, they received an answer that reeks of disregard to their concern and the arts they were speaking on the behalf of. You could have avoided so much of this if you had just said, I won't use her artwork in the future, since according to the jargon you've been tossing around in this video, this artist is a bad one for seeking out credit and should be avoided. But no, you had to leave the door open with such a vague answer allowing for the following to happen. The next day, I found a comment awaiting approval from Anime Christie, making the same demand I'd already said no to. It was only then that I remembered her. A few months previously, I was angrily ranting about the election results, like any normal person would, and she responded to it with, Lily dear, are you on your period? When I remembered this, I decided to have some fun. I proceeded to repeat my rules to her and told her no, and then I used my ever popular knob post on my blog, where I take a comical exaggeration of something that happened and make snarky quips in response, to throw shade at the idea of demanding a credit for a few seconds of footage. And then then, all I had to do was sit back and wait. So you admitted to escalating the situation at hand, all because the artist made a joke in the comments in one of your videos. Who's supposed to be the diva here? Alright, alright, let's take a look at the knob post itself. As for the signature aspect, it just proves that the artist drew it. That's it. Not everyone's signatures can be used to track down the original artist if you don't know who they are. Heck, some artist signatures aren't even legible in the first place. I should know, your own artist Lizzie has a hard to read signature herself. Also, you make the image smaller when you use them as a visual aid when your puppet's on screen, making it even harder to read the signature. And with regards to Anime Christie's image specifically, you almost covered up her signature. Plus, no one reads the description, eh? Then why put in the effort in making one? Why plug yourself and Lizzie there? Why have a snarky little quip targeted at Anime Christie asking if this is the wrong type of credit there? Why would you have the option of having people pay actual money to be put in there? 
As expected, the post was aggressively screenshotted and passed around the rift. We've talked about them before. Christy proceeded to go on more rants about respecting art, not helped by me needling her every chance I got, and getting progressively angrier. When it became clear I wasn't going to give her what she wanted, she ran to FNGR to rant to him for his How to Beg for Attention series, and then her friends decided to flood my Twitter notifications with hashtag respect the artist, in some sort of attempt to annoy me into capitulating. Of course, Twitter lets you mute hashtags and their extensions in place to make blocking someone take far less time than typing out hashtags, so smooth move. Dicks for eyes. Wait, so you mean to tell me that you went out of your way to taunt anime Christy and provoke her into taking action? Then, when she and her followers tried a different approach with a hashtag movement, you not only muted the hashtag but blocked anyone who used it? Wow, look who can dish it out but can't take it. Way to go, you bastion of excellent etiquette. I then told Christy that if a few seconds was that important to her, then she should file a DMCA and have the video taken down. Which she did. What I neglected to mention was that a DMCA ain't gonna do shit if you don't have full intention of suing me. Of course, I submitted a counter notification, which would require her to elevate her claim to actual legal action, and she relinquished the claim and made a final attempt to save face, because when you fail at being right, the best recourse is to make idiots think you're the bigger person. While I don't think the DMCA claim was appropriate on Anime Christie's part, you're not getting away with it scot-free either. From Christie's perspective, that tweet was an ultimatum. DMCA are bust. She took your advice because it meant that much to her. You provoked her into doing something that would make her look bad, then stood back and laughed at what she did. Yeah, about the moral high ground thing, at least she tried to end this peacefully. You, on the other hand, decided to kick her while she was not only down, but had already surrendered by the time you made this video. Don't talk to me about moral platitudes because your actions in this saga are nothing to be proud of. It was clear from the get-go that Christy wasn't going to get credited. I told her first messenger that the second request about not using her art was something I would think about, and had she left it at that, everything would have went smoothly. I mean, it's not like I have a separate show for exactly this kind of thing or anything. 1. How do you know for sure that Patreon was a messenger for Anime Christy? It is very possible for them to have come on their own accord. If you have proof of this, I would like to see it. 2. How dare you insinuate that Anime Christy is the root problem here? She at least tried to settle this diplomatically, while you admitted to taunting her for a past grievance. 3. Your Good Stuff series only has four entries by the time of this video's production, and they don't even rack up as many views as your other videos anyway. Even if she acts to be featured there, who's to say that you wouldn't refuse on the grounds that you have to earn that respect, or something stupid like that? Historically, I respond very well to simple and direct instructions, which is something that, also historically, bronies have been very bad at actually using. How about this instruction? Respect the artist. Or, how about this one? Give artists credit. Those are direct instructions, and how did you respond to them? Poorly. When you want something from me, the only thing that matters is your behavior if you want to get me to do something for you, especially when fair use is on my side, which is something that many diva artists seem to think doesn't apply to them. The patron first asks you politely in private. Anime Christy then asked again in a comment afterwards. You said no both times. What more do you want from them? And no, fair use is not even on your side. Fair use is a legal defense for those who live in the United States. You live in Canada, buddy. Therefore, you're under the doctrine of fair dealings. Its coverage extends to the purposes of research, private study, criticism review, and news reporting. So you would need to prove that Anime Christie's image was there for those purposes and not just transformative. Even if you did manage to prove that, Anime Christie could pull up this video and argue that the fairness of the dealing under the effect of the dealing on the work and claim your use of her work was used to slander her. Yes, these are hypotheticals, sure, but fair use and fair dealings are legal defenses regardless, and Lily shouldn't be using fair use as a shield to cower behind when faced with external pressures. I do not cave to threats. I do not cave to grabbing all your mates and dogpiling me. Josh tried that crap. Twice. And that's someone with a massive and rabid fanbase who will go so far as to dox me and threaten to kill me and my family. And it still didn't get me to stop calling him out on his bullshit. OBJECTION! You know what's worse than a liar? A liar who's bad at lying. That's a bold claim you have there, Mr. Tempest. I hope you have some bold evidence to support it. Of course I do. Unlike the plaintiff, I have actual proof to back up my claims. Well, let's see it. What evidence do you have that the plaintiff is lying? Take that! Wait, but that's the plaintiff's own video. Indeed, but take a look at this. Take that! 
The screenshot in Lily's video clearly show that Josh not only didn't want to cause drama, but actively attempted to prevent it. Well, what if the description was only recently changed? Sorry, that's just not the case, Your Honor. I took the liberty of checking the Wayback Machine to the day the video in question was posted, and lo and behold, the description is the exact same. Well, it's clear that the plaintiff is lying, so I think we can move on- OBJECTION! Wait, what? I have more proof that the plaintiff is lying. Take that! What's this? Well, Your Honor, this was a video uploaded by Josh three days after the aforementioned video was uploaded. In it, Josh lambasted his fans for attacking Lily, formerly known then as Ballspawn. I just checked Ballspawn's ass page. Seriously, people? You guys bombarded him with hatred after I explicitly told you not to! Did you guys not learn from the last two response videos? I asked you not to, but you did anyway! Oh, and uh, if you also check the front page of, of his Tumblr, that place. Did you guys learn nothing? Did you guys learn nothing from the Master of Foxes? How I flew off the handle at you guys again because you freaking sent your death threats! And now you're doing it to fall spawn. You know, if this keeps up, I'm not gonna do any more response videos. But yeah, yeah, that's a threat from me to you. I am not gonna do any more response videos if this is gonna keep happening. And after this, he never made a response video until the response to Lily Pete video. Lily ignoring this video in particular completely destroys her narrative. Okay then, I think you made it pretty clear that the plaintiff is lying. OBJECTION! Jesus, Aaron! I have even more proof that the plaintiff is lying! Take that! Lily also brought up Josh's response to Lily Pete as an example of him sicking his fans on her, but that can't be further from the truth. First, Josh admitted to hiding the fact that he and Lily fell out from his fans because he knew his fans would flog Lily for it. I wanted to keep the details of our falling out a secret for multiple reasons, and I had originally planned on not watching the video she made, but there has been such a strong reaction on all of my social media that I feel I have to address this in a public setting. I know I said I'd never do another response video because of the last three times this has happened, but I've been forced into a position where I have to defend myself. Second, in that same video, he begged his fans not to send death threats to Lily. So I am begging, pleading everyone who watches this video do not go and leave death threats or harassment on Lily's video, please. That's not acceptable under any circumstances. It's not right. Third, at the end of the video, Josh made one last ditch effort to save his relationship with Lily. Now, this next part goes directly to Lily. I'm sorry our friendship ended up the way it did. I wish there was something I could do to change things. I never wanted us to have this animosity between us. And I hope you can forgive me for the embarrassment and hurt I caused you. If not, I'll understand. I just hope that if it comes to that, we can both move on with our lives. That's not even the biggest contradiction present here. Take a look at this piece of evidence. Oh, goody. Take that! I would like for the court to recall an earlier sentence said by the plaintiff. And it still didn't get me to stop calling him out on his bullshit. The response to Lily Pete video was made after the guard break video was made. In fact, the guard break video was the video that Josh was responding to in the first place. Wait, what does that mean? It means that the plaintiff was actually the initial aggressor of this case, meaning she loses the right to cry foul that his fans threatened her as if she did nothing wrong. After all, in the guard break video she was saying stuff like, And that attitude can fuck off and die in a ditch along with the malignant human cancer that defend it. Referring to Josh. The fact that the plaintiff would lie about these events in such a manner in a pathetic attempt to slander Josh's name, especially considering that Josh had nothing to do with the current situation at hand, it casts doubts on the validity of Lily's account of what happened with Anime Christie. 
I hereby indict the plaintiff for charges of both perjury and slander. Are you done, Aaron? Yes. That will be all for now, Your Honor. Thank God. About that response video, I didn't mean for it to go that far, and I just wanted to say that. Ow! What? It's in the past. So audiences enable that behavior, and it's an enabling that needs to stop. People need to start putting their foot down when hack amateur artists try to play the Martyr Act. Their artistic discipline is no more arduous and time-consuming than any other artistic media. They don't suffer more than musicians, filmmakers, YouTube dancers, or writers, or what have you, no matter how much they want to believe they do. You know what those occupations have in common? They get credited and paid for their work. Yes, that includes you, Lily. Artists are just as entitled to credit and payment for their services as you are as entitled to your money via AdSense and Patreon. I can't give Christy what she wants, even if I wanted to because that only encourages this kind of behavior. I would be making the problem worse, because people like Christy do this because it gets them results, because most people will cave to harassment and dogpiling, encouraging more harassment and dogpiling. How does one make an argument against harassment while simultaneously demonstrating that it works? You can't, and so their persecution complex will worsen and their attitude will continue to become more aggressive. What are you even talking about harassment? What harassment? All she did was ask you in private to give her credit in the description. Not to take the video down, not for financial recompense, not even for an in-video shoutout, just description credit. You refused. Feeling that she was unjustly treated, she started a hashtag campaign. A hashtag campaign that you not only muted, but blocked people on the spot for using by your own admission. All the while taunting them, also by your own admission. Hashtag respect the artist was not an attack on you. It was not an insult, and it was not a threat to you either, as far as you've shown me. It was all to give credit to one artist. And even if it was harassment, you taunting your harassers was an asinine move on your part. If you really thought this was harassment, you should have reported it to the authorities like any normal person would do. And their attitude hurts good artists, who have to contend with a mountain of bad experiences to convince people to commission from them. It's why so many good artists have turned to Patreon, where people can pay reasonable amounts to just see more stuff from the person in question without having to destroy their wallet in the process. It's had the same effect on artwork that the likes of Digital Homicide have had on Greenlight. Or maybe, and I'm just spitballing here, perhaps they moved to Patreon because it's a more stable source of living than working from commission to commission. I would think of that! After all, you never know when some elitist snob will try to come along and whine and complain that they're entitled to free artwork despite publicly stating you don't do requests, all simply because they don't have the money to pay up. That'd just be horrible for business. So to all those people who think spamming respect the artist at me is going to suddenly make me drink the same acid you've been drinking, I have a hashtag of my own for you to endlessly repeat instead of making an actual point. Earn that respect. So your counter to a hashtag campaign that you deem to be equivalent to cyber harassment is to start a hashtag campaign of your own? Excellent logic, congratulations. Alright, let's take a look at this hashtag a bit more closely. The respect the artist hashtag was basically saying that an artist deserves the basic respect to be credited for their work. So Lily, how does one earn that respect for being credited for their own work? By being a good artist? Well, if they weren't a good artist, why would you use their work in your video? Seems kinda dumb, doesn't it? How about being a complete doormat and allowing their work to be used by any John Doe without credit? Well, that makes total sense to me, guys. Hey, Valatora, what do you think? Oh. While I would certainly stamp down on any attempt to just re-upload my work on another channel and have come down hard on people who knowingly invade my privacy, somebody abiding by that 30 second clause that YouTube has for other people's videos is something I'm just gonna have to deal with. They are required to credit me when they do that. Sure, it'd be polite if they did, but I would only come off as a genuine narcissist if I started demanding that from people. I mean, really, who the fuck am I to demand politeness from anyone in this case? I remember back when a bunch of pseudo-intellectuals covered your 3am rambled on dubstep and how you responded by basically demanding that they should remove a picture of you in the thumbnail, citing it was against YouTube's privacy guidelines. By the way, it's not. Since you had shown your face and name before this video aired, those are already in the public knowledge by the time that this video's release. So the only way that Bob could have violated this private policy would be if they posted your social security number, bank account information, or contact info, which they did not do. Despite that, they complied with your demands and obscured your face in the thumbnail anyway. So who are you, Lily, to be demanding that from them? They credited you and put your video in the description. 
Before you argue that this happened years ago, I point to Lily's factually incorrect assumptions about Josh's character spanning three years plus and say it's fair game. A while back, I told Lightning Bliss not to use my character in an animation alongside other analysts. She agreed, and people used that to try and twist my arm into capitulating to Christie's demands. However, I pointed out this very simple reality. Lightning Bliss could have very easily told me to fuck off, and there was nothing I could do about it. I don't have the resources to sue her for trademark. Sure, Lightning Bliss telling me to fuck off would have been rude, but being rude is something that nobody in this community, aside from maybe Silver, Dr. Wolf, KP, and Finn, has any right to complain about. Yeah, she could have, but you have to realize something. Lightning Bliss doesn't like inconveniencing people, or even upsetting others, to the point where she'll single-handedly edit rather large collaboration projects. Should I be doing the editing for this conversation? At this point, I'd suggest that you try to accept a bit of help from a different artist. I can try, but only if the artists here accept my apologies for any inconvenience on their behalf of this conversation. I am so sorry in advance, sir or madam. Really. How do you think someone like her would react if someone were to ask her to do something? She would immediately do what that person says to avoid conflict. Besides, would you really just roll over if she were to say no? While well, considering how vindictive you've been with Josh, I'd say the smartest thing for her to do in that situation would be just to capitulate. But wait, she shouldn't have yielded to you, Lily, because that only fuels that type of behavior of expecting people to bend before the commands of a self-entitled artist, right? So Lily, let me ask you, did Lightning Bliss earn that respect? I guess not, since you used Lightning Bliss's art in your videos without giving her credit anyways. <laughs> GG, eat a squid now. Incidentally, many people have in fact tried to rewrite history by saying that I got mad at Bliss for using my character, but the reality is that it was a very simple and direct don't do this. Why are these people so thoroughly lying? Probably because the only recourse they have is to try and paint me as a hypocrite, rather than apologizing for flipping out in the first place and trying again from the top. I did get angry at Bliss several months later for something completely different, but that's beside the point. You acknowledge that you got upset at Lightning Bliss for different reasons and don't explain why, despite knowing that the common perception is contrary to your account of the events. I actually don't know why you got upset at Lightning Bliss, despite my vast wealth well of knowledge on the outer workings, workings of the Brony analysis, analysis community. And at this point, I'm more likely to agree with the general consensus based off of how morally dubious you've been in this entire video. Would you like to clear the air here, or do you want to keep pushing your anti-credit agenda down people's throats? I generally only put my foot down at people being rude to me if they're trying to demand something from me, or misgendering me, and then getting mad when I won't listen to a single thing they say until they correct that mistake. Like this jackass, who went as far as to cite Black Pigeon Speaks, a neo-Nazi YouTuber whose rhetoric is indistinguishable from Anders Breivik and Elliot Roger. I mean, you can say a lot about Anime Christie and her attitude, and believe me, I certainly have, but at least she had enough common sense to know that she couldn't misgender me and cite fascist YouTubers in the process and expect to be taken seriously by anyone who matters. What are you even doing right now? Why bring up Brawny Buck? He misgendered you. So what? This video is about art divas, not about some random dude on the internet misgendering you. Anime Christy didn't do that, so why even bring it up? This means absolutely nothing to me, especially since you're showing me this stuff without any sort of context whatsoever. The reason good artists don't care is because they know eyes on their work will always come back to them whether the person who shared it credited them or not. That's why they don't pick these insignificant battles. Okay, cool. Nice assumption you got there. Let me counter with my own hypothetical. Take this picture of Silverquill that was used during a part of the video that I skipped. Looks like a pretty good piece of art, right? Now, how many people would know that this piece was done by an artist known as Lethal or a Mage by just looking at it? Not many, I would imagine. Now, how would those people know that this work belonged to Mage? There's no signature on it, after all. The only way someone would know that that piece belonged to Mage is if they were familiar with her art style or if they already knew it belonged to Mage. None of those help someone who doesn't know who Mage even is. So how would they track this image down? They would either have to scroll through a fan art of Silverquill or reverse image search it, which is a lot of work to find the artist of a single image. Switching gears, allow me to offer another hypothetical. Artists may not be fighting these battles simply because they don't know about it. Considering how vast the internet is, it is very possible for the artist not to be aware of someone using their art without credit. For example, Steam Asset Flipper stealing stuff from DeviantArt, and Art Thieves posting stolen stuff on Twitter. Either way, just because an artist doesn't complain about these issues doesn't suddenly make those previously stated instances okay. <laughs> Say my name! 
When Josh had his 30 minute tirade about how mean I was for pointing out when he was talking complete and total bullshit, a lot of people saw through the nonsense and inundated me with a massive amount of appreciation posts about how much I'd enrich their lives, got them to think more critically about their own beliefs, and even helped them shake off their own biases. There was a total of over 120 unique appreciation messages sent. And considering that this went from YouTube to my Tumblr, which you have to actually look for to find, that's saying something. Okay, we get it. You don't like Josh. Please stop bringing him up and stop lying about him. You sound like that one jealous ex-girlfriend who won't shut up about how mean Brad was to her, while ignoring the fact that the reason why they broke up in the first place was because Brad didn't agree with her view on the Real Housewives of Wisconsin that Tina wasn't really a good person, and she wouldn't stop harassing him about it. It then got to the point that she began lashing out on him and his friends on social media about the Real Housewives of Wisconsin, and then she escalated the matter even further by calling for the deaths of everyone who didn't like the Real Housewives of Wisconsin, and for goodness sake, the video in question brought in three other people as well, and each of them had a different different problem with your behavior. Josh brought up your slander against his US military experience, with nothing but your own Canadian veteran grandfather backing up your claims. Your incorrect assumption of Josh being racist because of his theory that Spike was Twilight's slave. Your harassment of Ink Rose, which involved an attempt to flood her with non-safe for work images. Your poor worth ethic as his editor, among other things. Lunasoft brought up how you shouldn't use your mental illness as an excuse for your actions, your overall toxic binary mentality, and how you've not changed over the years. Alex Roshan rebutted your stance on bullying and hazing in your guard break video, and Zane Russell brought up how even though he agreed with your overall opinions, he thought your general behavior was inexcusable. And let's not forget Josh's apologies and attempt to rekindle your relationship. So no, it was not just him complaining about you being mean to him. And no, it does not say something that people left you positive comments, because it's very possible that those messages on Tumblr were most likely left by already loyal fans of yours anyways, because as you stated, you'd have to go out of your way to find your Tumblr page. Even if what you're saying is true, the backlash on your guard break video was so great that you had to remove the comments on it. And remember, Lily curates her comment sections rather thoroughly, to the point where she removes criticism towards her. Censoring is the correct term when you remove well-articulated comments from your comment section just because they don't agree with your own opinion. After this, Lily rambles on about sticking up for the middleman from those oh-so-terrible art divas, and how even though she wasn't totally in the right, she was in the right where it really mattered, and blah blah blah. I'm done with this egotistical farce of a video, and I'm pulling the plug here. For my concluding statements this time, I want to try something different. You see, it's clear that Lily won't accept criticism from someone like me, so I decided to give my statements in a manner that she might accept. Hit the lever! Ah, that's more like it. Now, dear viewers, today's word on the hipster word a day calendar is projection. Throughout this video, Lily goes on and on about not crediting what she proclaims as hack artists. She says that sunlight is a powerful disinfectant, so allow me to shed some light on the subject. You see, Lily here has quite a history of not giving credit to people herself. No, I'm not talking about Lightning Bliss's art, but people far outside the Brony Analyst community. For example, her ending slogan, I'm Jerry, slash Lily, and I need a glass of water, was taken directly from Movie Bob. I can write stuff like that off, though, as a cute little reference since you acknowledge your source of inspiration. What I cannot forgive is you plainly ripping off other people. Let's go back to Josh's response to Ball Spawn. In that video, Josh called out Ball Spawn for ripping off Zero Punctuation. And gaming reviews ripping off the art style of Zero Punctuation, complete with image of Avatar sitting at a computer, half lidded expression of irritation, simple white circular art style, and even a yellow background. Classy. Now, if you think that Lily had learned from that video, you're sorely mistaken. Heck, back when Lily and Josh were on good terms, Lily took a line from him. The perfect execution of a villain and the only 10 equestrian pendants out of 10 on this list for perfectly depicting an absolute sadist. More than deserving of being my darkest Mario moment for perfectly depicting an absolute evil. That trend had not stopped there. It came full circle in this very video I covered. Hell, you could wipe your ass with a page of Mega Man sprites and there'll still be someone on DeviantArt who'll tell you that it's brilliant. That's still no reason to quit. You can wipe your ass with a page of Mega Man sprites and there'll still be someone on Comic Genesis who'll tell you that it's brilliant. But the biggest source of Lily's inspiration seems to come from the marvelous Jib Sterling. This cannot be argued. Lily herself has admitted to it, and it's on her TV Tropes page. 
While I understand taking inspiration from someone, you've crossed the Yahamage territory and straight into carbon copy territory. Your format follows Jim Sterling's to a T. You open up your video with an avatar, like Jim Sterling does with his opening skits. The bulk of your video is done with voiceover, with corresponding images, like Jim Sterling. And the conclusion is done with your avatar, like Jim does with his live-action skits. You even use a picture of Toon Critic Y2K, like Jim Sterling uses a picture of a shrimp whenever he's talking about an idiot. Your Good Stuff series? A shameless ripoff of Greenlight Good Stuff. Oh. You've stolen lines from him too. Bullying is a killer, not just a metaphorical killer, a fucking literal one. And nobody, no matter how much you imagine they fucked up, deserves to be constantly harassed. It's not just unfair, it's physically fucking dangerous. Stress is a killer, not just a metaphorical killer, a fucking literal one. And nobody, whether they hate their job or love it, deserves long-term stress. It's not just unfair, it's physically fucking dangerous. I made it look like I thought the thing about slave labor was silly and sensationalist. But in reality, I think this is the most disgusting part of this year's long temper tantrum. That right there. An accusation of slave labor, while simultaneously saying it's clickbaity, but that it's actually true, no really stop laughing. That is the most disgusting thing I have ever seen written or spoken about another person. And I've seen some disgusting shit written about KP and myself over the years. You can't just make that kind of claim based on nothing more than anonymous bullshit and just try and shrug it off. Take a good look. That is what slander looks like. That is what years of jealousy combined with a hungering desire to hurt someone looks like. I'm actually talking off script right now. Uh, I've got a lot of this episode pre-written, as I do all the episodes, but this is just pure from the heart, because I really do want to communicate that this bit of the lawsuit, the bit that I just talked about, is for me the worst part of it. This is the worst part of the two and a half years I've spent dealing with the Romine brothers. Right here where I'm accused of civil conspiracy and uh, what else did he say in the lawsuit? Like criminal direction of harassment, something like that. The implication that I have been knowingly, surreptitiously orchestrating actual line crossing attacks on James Romine's person. That to me is one of the most offensive things I've ever seen written about me. And I've read a lot of offensive things written about me. Whatever he thinks I said about him, whatever he thinks I did, if that were published in a paper, that's what libel looks like. Take another good look at it. That is what libel looks like. And it doesn't help matters that your artist meltdown story with pot shots of Digital Homicide came out the same day as Jim Sterling's account of his lawsuit with Digital Homicide. At the very least, you credited him for his catchphrase. I can't say the same for TV tropes. Oh yes, dear viewer, Lily's line-taking isn't just limited to YouTube. Many of her jokes from her MLP seasons in a minute are taken from MLP's Warp That I Saw page on TV Tropes. Are you the only one who knows of an impending apocalyptic event? Well, you shouldn't worry about that. You really need to get out more. Instead of stopping said villain from returning, just get six teenagers to do it. Throwing your wife always works. Genocide solves everything. If there's too much stuff to do, don't clone yourself. Cloning is bad. JK Rowling is secretly Indiana Jones. Training doesn't matter for crud. Destiny will let you stumble rump backwards into being the best there is, even if it's something you don't necessarily want to do. I would continue, but that would take too long, and I'll have Valatora take a picture and move on. As a college student, artist, and content maker, this type of behavior is appalling. How am I supposed to respect your views of not giving credit to an artist when you make money off of what is essentially plagiarism? And that's just the stuff that I'm aware of. Who knows what else you've taken? That's my cue! Wait, what the? Play of the game. Sup folks, I'm Quiz 2, Revenge of the Sequel. Now I've covered Lily once before, but there's one thing I just gotta get off my chest. I mentioned your ends over easy video in my commentary, but there was one thing in there that always rubbed me the wrong way, but I couldn't figure out why. And that's when I realized. The final confrontation with the master is incredibly nuanced and speaks to the quality of the writing in the original Fallout. A quality that the series has been sorely lacking as of late. We don't see villains that well planned out. The Master is essentially a mutated Hitler, but unlike a lot of analogies to Hitler, his motives and reasons for his actions are carefully explained. Hell, the real Hitler wasn't as nuanced as the Master was. The rest of the Wasteland doesn't want to live under the Unity's rule, but the Master doesn't care. If you want to talk him down, you have to prove to him that his goal isn't going to work, that it's a failure, a waste. 
your only other option is to kill him. Badly written villains never explain themselves beyond platitudes. You know what that sounds like? Because there are no obvious speech options popping up with percentiles, there's no way of telling what the best way of attempting to talk him down might be, except for your own judgement. You have to engage him as a reasonable person. The best thing is, it's impossible for him to be talked down on moral grounds. He doesn't care about mankind's survival or killing people because for him, the mutants are the future of mankind and the ends justify the means. The only way to talk him down is to explain why the plan wouldn't work. And a bit of... The Master had a comprehensive explanation for why the human race needed to be converted into mutants now. Bethesda can't come up with a single compelling explanation for why this is actually a good idea beyond the platitude of we need to undo mutants, do you get it? I'm a racist. There's no philosophical struggle. Yeah, so next time you want to rip something off, be sure not to also take a $5 word that nobody uses in day-to-day -day conversation. We now return you to your regularly scheduled final thoughts. Thank you, Gwiz. Now, it's clear that you want to be the Jim Sterling of the Brony community, but there's a difference between you and Jim Sterling. You see, when I hear Jim Sterling, I think Jim Sterling. When I hear Lily Pete, I think Movie Bob, Yahtzee, TV Tropes, Josh Scorcher, and of course, Jim Sterling. In fact, you strike me more as a digital homicide than a Jim Sterling. Let's go down the list, shall we? Tried and failed to claim the moral high ground from their critics? Check. Taking assets from somebody without giving credit in a work that's clearly monetized? Check. Claiming people who call out their stolen assets are bad for the overall field they're in? Check. Claimed harassment when they were the ones who started the drama in the first place? Check. Curated comment sections which specifically target comments that criticize you no matter how civil it was delivered? Check. Slaughtering Grounds music? Check. You see my point, right? I don't know where you got the idea that in a world filled with people who do shady stuff on the internet, that you would somehow get away with it. But consider this a warning. People aren't as stupid as you think, Lily, and someone's always keeping tabs on naughty little scamps on the internet, no matter how sneaky they think they are. Steal lines or segments from other YouTubers? Someone will catch on and provide proof you did it. Lied about drama that happened months if not years ago? Someone will come to set the record straight. Curate your YouTube and Tumblr accounts to censor criticism? You'll just give the censored parties a bigger microphone to yell into. Erect a high horse built up of misrepresentation and lies? And someone will promptly tear it to shreds like the farce it is. Word of the wise, Lily, you will be caught, and you better be prepared to be held accountable for your actions when you get caught. So my advice for you is fourfold. 1. Start being original. In academic settings, plagiarism is not tolerated. Shouldn't be any different in artistic settings either. Stop lifting jokes, lines, and styles and segments from other YouTubers, and I might take your words about the integrity of artists and art divas seriously. 2. Show some actual common courtesy to others on the internet. You need the goodwill of your audience to survive on this platform. If you tank your reputation by being an insufferable dolt, well, you're no AAA publisher, dude. You can't just darn the consequences of your actions and treat your audience poorly. Doing so will only hinder your chances of success, because such behavior is unbecoming of a member of a fandom whose tagline is love and tolerate, and will only serve as another cautionary tale on how not to behave when one expects to be taken seriously online. Also, calling for the deaths of those who don't agree with your political views don't help your case either. 3. If you're going to ignore those previous two pieces of advice, then at the very least credit everything and everyone. None of this would have happened if you'd taken a couple of seconds out of your life needed to credit the artist. That would have made it easier to defend your plagiarism both legally and morally. The only reason why I didn't mention you taking lines from Movie Bob in your glass of water the audience is a problem is because you acknowledged it. Besides, you have made an entire video plugging the musician who made that glass of water cover you've been using for a while. What makes this artist any different? Heck, your own muse of the hour, Jim Sterling, wouldn't approve of your views on this matter, considering how he would later lambast the ideas of writers working for exposure instead of money. In any case, you wound up giving both credit and attention to the artist you said you weren't going to credit in the video, so good job on you, Lily. Good job you. Fourth, can you do me and yourself a favor and stop mentioning Josh or even alluding to him? You were the one at fault in that little fallout of yours. You were the one who constantly tried to slander his name in not one, but two videos now. Your bait and switch April Fool's joke was not funny and was in poor taste in light of everything you put him through, and you are provoking a large set of people by doing this, knowing dang well what you're doing. Let us also consider the fact that you are buying the hand that fed you. If it wasn't for Josh's response on you all those years ago, you wouldn't be half as successful as you are now, and you know it. 
He collabed with you. He paid for you to be a part of his team. He promoted you, and this is the things he gets? Bottom line, either make up with Josh or shut up about him. I'm sick and tired of your petty defamation campaign. By the way, in case someone wants to get on me for using a whole bunch of Jim Sterling quotes during this segment, I not only acknowledge that I did so, but I put more effort in ripping Jim off in this segment than Lily did in her entire channel. Furthermore, there's a point I'm making, to highlight how ironic it is for someone to be ripping off Jim Sterling so heavily while embodying the elements that Jim would call people out on. Also, I've placed all the quoted videos in the description, and if I missed any, inform me in the comments and I'll put them in there too. So yeah, thank god for Jim Sterling, and while you do that, you can thank god for me! So with all of that said, I have one final message to deliver to our new good friend from yours truly. I'm Arone Tempest, and that lily is the big picture. Cheers. Now you know how the games and the programs are made And what to do to make sure they're not gonna fade The bottom line is, it's all up to you There's nothing more that I can do The ball's in your court, dribble, shoot, or pass I'm sure you'll make your decision with class Don't call me that floppy See ya, I'm outta here Can't be dealt with. Artists can't be dealt with. Stuck up. Stuck up.